All right, if you're in the market for new monitors, you might want to give these a shot. Today, I'm reviewing the IK Multimedia iLoud Precision MTM monitors. What's with the names, guys? Seriously. All right, so in the iLoud Precision range, we've got the five, the six, and this one, which is called the MTM, which stands for mid, tweeter, mid. Mid, tweeter, mid. It's as easy as that. So, What's in the box? Let's see, let's open it up. We've got a manual. Oh, this is an unboxing manual. Nobody needs an unboxing manual, come on. We've got a USB cable, could be handy. We've got a power cable, kind of need power, don't you? We've got something in a black little box with IK on it. That's a mic clip, okay. That must mean that there is a mic. So that's the ARC mic, the measurement mic. And safety instructions. Don't need those either. One thing that comes with these, which is awesome, is their very own iLoud isolation pads. So those are four ISO pads for underneath the monitors to isolate them from whatever surface you've got them on. Any other speaker manufacturers, if you're watching, that's the way to go. Okay, foam, more foam, more foam, more foam. And then we've got a speaker. Wow. We've got a really nice cover that also reminds me of my ATCs. They also have covers like this. I like nice stuff. And there they are, the iLoud MTMs. Let's see what they can do. Let's see what they sound like. And let's get going with this review. Right, let's run through some specs. The MTM model features Class D amplifiers with a total output of 175 watts RMS. By using Class D amplifiers in these models, IK has both made sure these monitors stay lightweight and don't run too hot in terms of temperature. Which is great if you're planning to position these monitors on top of the meter bridge of an analog console like I am. The frequency response on these monitors goes from 36 Hz to 30 kHz and with the digital DSP they've got on board they actually managed to get a flat frequency response within 1 dB between 45 Hz and 30 kHz as well as perfect time alignment between the drivers. Alright so let's have a look at the back of this iLoud Precision MTM monitor. As far as features and buttons on the back of this monitor go, we've got five knobs over here, which lets us dial in the low frequency extension, which is basically a high pass filter. We've got a low shelf, a high shelf. We've got the calibration setting and you can turn on and off the auto standby. Underneath that, we've got the level, which speaks for itself. And we've got the input on a combo jack. So you can input XLR and jack. Then we've got a USB port that allows you to connect the monitor to your computer so you can fully set it up and calibrate it with the X monitor software. And then we've got another balanced input for the ARC mic, the calibration mic, and make sure you're plugging your signal into here and your mic into here because I did it the other way and uh, I didn't get some new. Above that you see two inputs that are for the controller which allows you to flip through the calibration setups without the need of opening up the software. All right, let's take a look at the X monitor software. In the top row, you'll find the voice section where you can enable different EQ presets that IK has made for us. So we've got a comfort setting, which will probably make them sound a bit more hi-fi. You've got a high frequency presence setting. You've got a wide dispersion setting and you've also got monitor modeling. So they take on the EQ curve and the time alignment between the drivers of the speakers we're emulating over here. So we've got NS10s and then the 80s NS10s and the 90s NS10s because apparently there's a difference between them. KRK5s, I think the yellow 5 is suggesting. You've got hi-fi stuff, so you've got Bowers & Wilkins bookshelf, 6-inch 
things you've got high FICO actual monitors and there is a tab called multimedia so you can listen through a 49 inch tv with a crazy EQ curve you can listen to a portable bluetooth speaker and even a smartphone so you don't have to bounce stuff out send it to your phone listen on your phone anymore you can just listen to it on these monitors and then on the bottom you've got the contour and the calibration section so over here i can set it to a large format console because i've set these speakers up on a large format console and it will give me an eq curve that might be suitable for what i'm doing over here so we've got a desk filter going on around 262 hertz and we've got a little bit of a bump with a low shelf from 80 hertz down below that you've got the standby timer which lets you set it anywhere between the off position and 120 minutes next to that you've got the delay section which lets you delay up to 10 milliseconds over here in the middle you've got the presets so this is where that remote control comes in handy so you've got a remote control that you can just put on your desk and you can switch between one, two, three, and four without even having to open up the X monitor software. And then over here, you've got the ARC calibration setup and that is their superpower. Let's go ahead and grab the calibration mic and see what these can do if you calibrate them and if it's actually needed. All right, so let's see. We are going to click next. Okay, so number one is more over here. Okay, then we need to go to point two. That is on the other side here. That's over there. Capture. Then there is point three, which is at my shoulder. So that is about here, I guess. And then the fourth point is on my other shoulder, right here. All points done, and calibration done. Okay, we've done the measurements with the calibration mic, and this actually looks pretty similar to what you would get in a room correction software. Over here, we've got green line number one on before, which represents the measurement it did on that first left speaker. So this is what that speaker is doing without any correction. So you see that there's some dips in the lows and there's a bump in the low mids. And then on 1K, there's a big 9 dB dip. And then in the high end, it smooths out a bit more. But it's pretty much all over the place. It's definitely not within 1 dB. Same goes for the other line on the right. So you see that the frequency response on those speakers are not exactly the same. And that might have to do with uh, more diffusion of the SSL over here and more hard surfaces on the center section of the SSL over here. That might have to do with the hard glass surface over there and the softer surface over there. But if the calibration on these monitors is actually any good, we should be getting a pretty straight line when we look at the after measurements that is pretty close and that is pretty straight if that is actually what they're doing i'm pretty impressed so i'm gonna have a listen with and without calibration and then i'll let you know what i think I've had a quick listen to the calibration and I have to say it is doing a lot. I don't know if I would engage the calibration in a treated room like this because I just like to have my monitors the way they are and then learn their frequency response and learn how they actually respond. But if you happen to be in a situation where you just cannot treat your room, this might be the thing for you and this might actually help you out a lot. Something I don't really like about the calibration setup is that you have to physically plug in the mic into one speaker and then do the four points on that one speaker, then plug the mic into the other speaker and then do the same four points and remember where exactly those four points are or put stickers or tape somewhere to find those spots. That could have been way easier. Ja, maar honestly, ik zou gewoon hier op deze speakers, ik zou gewoon kunnen mixen.
Okay, so I actually moved them to the live room to really put them to the test and to really see what they've got. Because this is a different environment. It is built as a live room, but I still wanted to see if we could actually work on them over here. And to be honest, I actually like them a bit better over here than in the control room. That might be because they are on dedicated speaker stands over here instead of on the meter bridge of a console. Setting up speakers on a mix-in console always introduces more reflections than you want. So that might actually be why they sound better over here because on their dedicated speaker stands, they've got a bit more room to breathe and there's a bit more air between the speakers and the first things that start to introduce reflections. So that might be why they actually sound better over here. All those features are great, but the biggest question on all of our minds is how do they sound? I've done quite some listening in the SSL room as well as here in the Neve room. And I have to say, sound-wise, they're also pretty solid. They've got a good frequency response, they extend pretty low, but I have to say, for my taste, they're a bit shy in the low mids. But hey, we've got all the DSP with the equalizer and everything, so we could probably put a bump somewhere in the low mids to make them work. Normally, when speakers go this low, when they only have five inch drivers, I get a bit concerned because the more low end they need to put out, the less emphasis there generally is on transient response. They don't seem to have any issues there. The transient response actually seems to be quite okay. The high mids and high end are pretty detailed, but they feel a little bit cold to me. And I don't really know if that's a good or a bad thing because maybe that just forces you to work harder because the speaker doesn't give you that mojo in the high mids and the highs. Okay, so before I'm gonna wrap this up, let's do a quick pros and cons list on the Precision MTM monitors. So let's start with the pros. The first pro I've got is the design. I personally really like the design. I really like all black monitors. And with the textured paint job they did, they really remind me of my ATC SEM 25s. Another pro is that they're pretty lightweight and that is mainly because of the Class D amplifier that's inside which still gives it enough power. So for that compact lightweight package that you get, you still get a lot of sound and a lot of power. The frequency response is really solid. I already liked it without any calibration, just as is. So that's another pro. Of course, the calibration and tuning options and all the EQ stuff in the X monitor software is a big plus. The isolation pods that you get with them is a great addition. It just really makes sense and I wish that every manufacturer did that. And then last but not least on the pro side is their price because for 1400 euros, this is a pretty good deal. Okay, then let's talk the stuff that I don't like about them. As I already said in the pros list, the frequency response is really solid, but they lack a bit of low mids. Also, on the frequency response side, I've included that the high mids and the highs are a bit cold for my taste. But maybe that's the thing, and it's my taste. That might mean you get better mixes because the high mids and highs are a bit boring. On the calibration side, I think things could have been a bit more efficient. If we could run one mic to both speakers, it would make the calibration process a lot faster and a lot easier. In order to calibrate your monitors and use the X monitor system, you have to have it hooked up via USB. And honestly, I don't really like the USB implementation for that because you might not have that many free USB ports. Or if you're doing a multi-speaker setup and you need to calibrate, you actually need to either move your computer or you need to get really long USB cables. So in my opinion, it would have been easier if you could have one master that feeds the USB and then link through USB or Ethernet or some other protocol. So you would have one USB going into your computer and then you daisy chain from that main monitor. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and leave a comment telling me which other gear I should review. And I'll see you on the next one. Later.